Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about those stars that really didn't actually become stars that really never reached the main sequence. And the big problem there is that for a star to be a star, nuclear fusion has to take place at its core. And for nuclear fusion to take place at its core, at least a temperature of 10 million degrees must be reached at the core. Because 10 million degrees is what's required to make the molecules and the atoms move fast enough so that they can slam together and turn hydrogen into helium. Without 10 million degrees of temperature, they will not move fast enough, they will not bump into each other, they cannot fuse together because the nuclear strong force is not strong enough to pull them close enough together. The repulsive forces of the protons will simply keep them far enough apart so nuclear fusion cannot take place. So, for enough heat to be built up, enough pressure needs to be built up because of gravity, and for that you have to have enough mass for gravity to push it together tight enough and dense enough for the temperature to reach 10 million degrees. The required mass is at least 0 0.08 times the mass of the Sun, or 8% the mass of the Sun for a star to become a main sequence star for the temperature of 10 million degrees to have been reached. That also means the mass must be at least 80 times the mass of Jupiter. So Jupiter is not nearly large enough to become a star of itself. So what's the difference between something like Jupiter, which we call a planet, and something like a brown dwarf? Because neither one of them has nuclear fusion taking place, and they're both pretty well made up of the same material, mostly hydrogen and helium, about 75% hydrogen and about 25% helium. So what makes the difference? Really, there is technically no difference between them. So we kind of put an artificial limit to what the size of a brown dwarf can be because if a star never reaches the main sequence, never starts nuclear fusion, even though heat is built up and it can get very hot at the center of those stars, they will fizzle out, they will slowly stop the contraction because they, they, uh, there's not enough mass there to, pull, to push the star any closer and so there's kind of a balance between the pressure of the gas and the pressure of gravity or the force of gravity pushing together, it just kind of sits there and glows away. It pretty well puts, uh, let's see what I put here, emit, it emits a little bit of light and mostly infrared radiation, so it just kind of sits there and doesn't really shine but glows in the dark, so to speak. And it's very difficult to find these objects because they're not very bright, they're very small. Because of the enormous gravitational force, they get pushed down to about one to two times the size of Jupiter, and that's where their collapse pretty well stops. That's basically where you have kind of a pseudo-planet, pseudo-star, somewhere in between. So by definition, we've determined then that we'll call it a brown dwarf if the mass is at least 12 times the mass of Jupiter and no greater than 80 times the mass of Jupiter. And if it's less than that, we'll call it a planet. And we've actually discovered brown dwarf-like objects far away from the solar system, not within any solar system, kind of floating through space on their own like a star, but yet it has less than 12 times the mass of, of Jupiter, so we actually call it a planet, and we call it like a wayward planet, but really you could call it a brown dwarf that's too small to be called a brown dwarf, or a planet that's too big to be called a planet, who knows? It's kind of in a no man's land. So call it a planet, call it a brown dwarf, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Size-wise, they're not much bigger than the size of Jupiter because the gravitational force collapses them down to that size, even if they have that much more mass. Surface temperature depends a lot on the mass of the object. If it's a very massive object, like 20, 30, 40 times the mass of Jupiter, the surface temperature can be several thousand degrees, and slowly over time, as the temperature begins to dissipate into space, the temperature will, 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 uh, will get smaller and smaller, and it will glow less and less, and slowly will fade out of out of sight. How many of these brown dwarfs are there? Well, estimates, some estimates indicate there may be as many as a hundred billion brown dwarfs just in our galaxy alone. With 250 billion stars, that would be a, cons uh, a significant portion of the number of objects in the, in the uh, galaxy. But yet, it's not really known how many there are. It could be several billion, it could be 50 billion, it could be 100 billion, but what we do understand is that there's probably billions of them throughout the galaxy. And again, never became a star because they just weren't big enough to, to get the temperature to reach 10 million degrees for nuclear fusion to start.